Hello, viewers. It's time for another Mockley Brewing Experiment. This time, I'm yeast boosting. I'm trying to boost my yeast. I'll show you two experiments that might boost yeast activity in my Mockley. Number one, wheat flour, and number two, yeast nutrient and energizer. These will be two stage brews, Yiangju, with first stage Bombok and second stage Godubab. If you're familiar with this channel, it's dedicated to rustic Asian rice wine, and there's lots of other Mockley recipes for you to look at. So, uh, so ch please uh, check them out. And if you like this video, please click that like button subscribe, click the bell to be notified of updates. I have a new video every Thursday. And uh, please share this video wherever it is appropriate. I appreciate your help in spreading the word about rustic Asian rice wine. Let's brew. So I start off with Bombok on day zero. So that's uh, with uh, 200 grams of rice flour and uh, boil some water, boil a bit extra. Um, I need 600 milliliters of boiling water added slowly and, and stirring all the time. And that'll make the bombok. So it's a partially cooked rice flour in boiling water. So you end up with this porridge called bombok. And uh, set that aside to cool to room temperature. That'll be the first experiment. And then uh, do it again. Same amount of rice flour and water. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I measured that right. It looks a little off. Um, okay, we'll see. Um, set that aside to cool to room temperature as well. So uh, next, as that's cooling, we're going to mix up Naruk for, for A. Mix up 90 grams of Naruk, 200 milliliters of water, quarter teaspoon of yeast, and then quarter cup of wheat flour, meal garu. So that's just regular wheat flour. And I've seen this in recipes before. Now for B, same thing, 90 grams of Nuruk, 200 milliliters of water, quarter teaspoon of wine yeast. But what's different here is I'm adding eight teaspoon of yeast nutrient that has uh, urea and diammonium phosphate. And also a sixteenth of a teaspoon of yeast energizer, which also has diammonium phosphate magnesium sulfate, and something called spring cell, which I don't know what it is. But these seem to be standard beer-making yeast boosters. So I'm going to try that uh, for B. I'm going to set these two Nuruk mixtures aside and wait for the Bombok to cool to room temperature. And here's A again. I'll uh, mix in the Garuk and flour mixture. That mixes pretty easily. I want it nice and liquid, of course, so I can pour it into the fermentation jar. So that's A with the flour. Clean that off and uh, keep the lid loose, as always. And this is B. So B has the the yeast nutrient and yeast energizer. Hopefully that, hopefully both of these boost the yeast activity. Uh, hope this helps my, my brew, but uh, we'll see what happens. As usual, I'm going to uh, put these in the basement where it's about 20 degrees Celsius. And on day one, I see, I see bubbling for A. That looks, uh, that looks pretty good. And B, B, B looks a little different, but it is, it's bubbling as well. I'm going to stir this twice a day for the first two days. It's very, it's very liquid. It's easy to stir. And on day two, I can already see some separation in A. So there's more liquid on top for A. And B is still bubbling more and it's more uniform. Okay, but they're both fermenting, so that's good. 
Now it's time for the second stage. Let's make godubap. I want 800 grams of chopped sal for each brew. Wash the rice. And this is more than 1.6 kilograms because I'm doing this alongside another project. So there's extra rice in here. But afterwards, uh, after I steam the rice, I'm going to weigh it and uh, get the right proportion of rice for these two brews. So after washing gently, soak it for, for more than three hours. After it's soaked, drain it, uh, rinse it off one more time and drain it for half an hour. Now I boil the steaming cloth, ready to steam it. Uh, Got the uh, water almost boiling there, put the cloth on top and put the rice in the cloth, fold it up, make sure it's spread out evenly, and uh, start timing when the steam is escaping, and uh, steam it for 40 minutes. And uh, after 40 minutes, uh, lift it out carefully and we'll spread this out to cool. Let it cool to room temperature. I usually turn it once, that helps it uh, cool more evenly. Okay, so it's not cool yet, but uh, after an hour, it takes more than an hour to cool. Um, uh, with a scale, I've measured out the, uh, right, the amount of rice. Um, And to add the godubat to jar A, that's with the flour. And mix it by hand, separating all the grains of rice carefully and gently. And then the same for, for jar B, which has the yeast nutrient and energizer. Mix that by hand. Separate all the grains of rice gently. Okay, feels good. Okay, now we have our two experimental yeast boosting jars. Which one will work best? I do not know. I see bubbles in both of them. On top, uh, top they're 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 dry, but that's that's normal. I'm going to do match test. Okay, there's lots of carbon dioxide. That means it's fermenting rapidly. Also, I can hear the I can hear the bubbles, so I know it's fermenting. And there's especially a lot of bubbles in B. It's puffed up. And the matches continue to go out. You see, there's more liquid on the bottom now, after a few days. The match matches continue to go out. It's day six now. It does look pretty cloudy in the liquid on the bottom. Also, that layer is rather low. Oops, there's a small cat interruption. What do you want? Oh, she wants to, uh, she wants to stand on my shoulder. Okay, back to brewing. Back to brewing. It's uh, it's uh, day seven. Uh, still testing with the match test. I do have to lower the match farther before it goes out. Now, neither of these look like they're they've uh, fermented an extra amount. They were they were busy bubbling at the beginning, but it hasn't. Uh, eating the rice as much as I expected. Oh, the match, that match is not going out. Oh, okay, it went out. So that's, I think that's almost the last day. Oh, and that one, okay, that, okay, so match stayed lit. It's time to bottle B. So for I'm gonna keep A for, for uh, I'm not gonna bottle A, but I will bottle B because the match did not go out for B. 
dump in the the entire jar into the filter bag and I'll uh, get the remnants at the bottom of the jar there that's why it's important to stir it to seem to stick to the bottom and it's a little hard to squeeze this one out it's it's resisting me so that's also a sign that fermentation didn't go as well as I as I had hoped so this is the this had yeast energizer and nutrient and I ended up with five more than 500 grams of leftover she gave me so that's that's not so good but the, the brew looks fine let's uh let's bottle it see how much we get get about a liter and a half it is thick and has a malty milky taste it's a bit tart and has a powdery texture so that that didn't seem to help a lot this uh the yeast nutrient and energizer did not seem to help there and on day 10 i still have jar a um i'm gonna try the okay the match does go out Gonna keep it another day at least. Okay, even on day 11, match goes up. Okay, day 12. Now it's looking more uniform, the rice falling down. But the the liquid layer was never very large. Okay, day 12, okay, it's, the match is not going out. Now it's saying lit, it's time to bottle A. Boil the filter bag again. Stir up jar A, dump the whole jar into the filter bag. This time I did a better job stirring it. And time to squeeze. Okay, this feels more normal. This was easier to squeeze. And, uh, but still I have 400 grams of chigimi. That's better, but it's not great. Let's see, uh, let's see how much I have here. So it's still about one and a half liters. It is uh, sweet and milky. It has a smooth, balanced, rich taste. That's what's most notable. This tastes great. Uh, it still has a bit of a powdery texture, but the special thing I have to notice here, this tastes, uh, even though it didn't ferment completely, it still had lots of chigami, this just tastes better. Adding that wheat flour made it taste better. So I'm gonna do the real tasting three days later here, is uh, see how it's settled. They've settled the same. It's pretty firm at the bottom. I'm gonna to need to stir, I'm gonna to need to shake these well, but before I shake them, I'm going to pour off the changju. That's the clear layer. I'm going to taste that separately. Then I'm going to shake them. And uh, so that's both layers mixed together. That's the wanju. And then I'm going to dilute that. And that's going to be my makgeolli. The reason I'm tasting this three ways is to get all the dimensions of the flavor. Some things will taste different depending on the form. So I'm going to start off with the wanju. A has a sweeter aroma and a balanced taste, and B has a maltier taste and is harsher at the end. I'm going to taste the diluted wanju, the makgeolli. They, these both have a better texture, but A still tastes a lot better. And now the Changchu, uh, if I have to describe this in terms of fruit, A is a buttery pear and B is a lemon pith, a little unpleasant. So it's very clear which addition tasted the best. The, adding the flour produced a great tasting brew. Now, uh, in terms of boosting the yeast, it's possible that, uh, that the yeast was boosted in B, but it it didn't help the overall process. If something was unbalanced. It didn't uh, consume the rest of the of the rice. There was a lot of leftovers, so that didn't work out. So it it, it did not help to try to artificially boost the yeast with these additions. But uh, the flour really did help the taste. So I think that's a useful conclusion. I uh, 
I hope you found this experiment interesting. Uh, please let me know in the comments the kinds of things you want to see in the future and let me know what you're brewing. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.